Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. Because I'm the hurt child. Became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. Y'all week been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Okay. So, yeah, we can start however you like. Hmm. Yep, a lot of stuff has happened in my life, mm -hmm. so... There's been changes. There's been a death. There's been um, yeah, different parts, different um, moments. Uh, my structure of life has changed. I went from being unemployed to being employed. Um, uh, so. Now I have, you know, some stability in that sense, which is great. Mm. So, so it's funny, funny. Um, my therapy with my therapists has come to a mutual end because I'm in a good place. Mm. So, or for now and also there was some understanding that uh financially at that moment i couldn't continue but i was in a good enough place despite yeah this close person close-ish person a family member too um suddenly passing away like mm. so i don't know yeah. Interesting time. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, we could explore any of those things. Um, or any, anything. Yeah. I, there... Go ahead. Well, I've been thinking um, just like the little moments of those events that just have happened. And um, in particular, I guess, attending a viewing in a funeral, um, which I haven't in years. Mm -hmm. And I especially haven't at the tail end of this pandemic or whatever you may call it, where it's it's an interesting setting and just being 
exposed in a room of people grieving or celebrating, I should say, too, of mm -hmm. this um, family member and being around my family. I, I'm one that hasn't really hung out or I don't even really tend to hang out with my family. And then mm -hmm. when these past two years, I especially didn't hang out. And so I've been thinking about um, or when it, when I was at the funeral, I sort of was in like, Oh, I see everyone I haven't seen in years. And Oh, wait a minute. That was my childhood priest. I, I can't believe he's still alive. And mm -hmm. um, just like thinking about my upbringing. Yeah. 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 It's a lot, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, and it's neither good nor bad. I feel like I feel like I've just accepted, although it's interesting, and I always want to feel what it actually feels like. And somehow, sometimes I still feel very distant from it. Um. um. Meaning like you want, you wanted to feel, are you expecting to feel something and then it just didn't, wasn't as strong as you imagined? Yeah, it's an odd feeling where it's like, I don't know, maybe I feel this great where things, I don't know what the term is, but I don't feel particularly blended with it as I normally mm -hmm. do. And that is exciting. And that excitement though becomes maybe this guilt that I have had before. A guilt of like that almost like I guess the one thing that I think about that is maybe can be a bit negative is the idea that or the feeling that my sense of grief grief is not as traditional or I don't know as traditional to how my fam my other family members would grieve or yeah um so I guess I have this comparison in my yeah, you know, and it's it's interesting. I think the process of um, life and yeah, death, death. I grew up with quite a bit of death, actually, in this way of I grew up with a lot of older people. I didn't. I wasn't raised by my parents as much as I was raised with their aunt, their aunts and uncles. So my great aunt mm. and my grandfather, like that's the generation that raised me. Mm. Um, so uh, I don't know where, the, so I just, for me, when someone passes, I, I am sort of used to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then, and then you have that feeling of the comparison of, of your grief to others. And is that, is that okay? Is it not okay? Is it, is it even exciting to think that, you know, you're, you're handling it particularly well. And then the, and then the guilt of, of, I shouldn't be excited or I'm doing something wrong if I'm not grieving like, like they are. Yeah, and um, I, that's sort of it. And also being in a religious setting, um, mm -hmm. Roman Catholic to be specific, I feel like mm -hmm. I don't grieve the same way as um, my other family members in that regard. And I guess things become 
sometimes I do see it as a, a spectacle. <laughs> yeah, other other people's grief be just being like bigger than yours and well not even bigger but I feel like I just don't maybe I don't I I really don't agree with how most of us see death or most of us maybe shy away from death I don't Mm -hmm. or maybe I'm talking to you know I, I don't know I guess I haven't experienced death yet um, your own yeah i haven't experienced my own death like i'm sure. just talking like yeah. i'm the master of dealing with other people's death but i haven't experienced mm-hmm. my own death i haven't had a near-death experience um but i so i guess there is a level of like maybe there is a pretension or there's this guilt that's the thing that's the guilt it's like there's a part of me part of this this like um i don't know what to call it i don't want to like i don't want to make it me sound like some person like it's just like there's this guilt that i can't level down or uh, accept or grief the same way as others that i'm close to or should be close to (laughs) yeah 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 so it sounds like like you were saying just kind of a comparison of your grief versus theirs and having guilt about that and i think it also again goes back to uh religious context where perhaps my way of grieving or my view of death isn't the same and I'm well sure if I went to some family members they would tell me how I should feel how I should act So then now there is this other guilt or this other external, like, and I I guess this makes me a bit... Shame, like being shamed by them. Yeah, that makes me angry. I can safely still say there is some anger in this. (laughs) Like, I I would get shamed because I'm not following tradition mm-hmm. yeah um i'm not seeing not doing i'm not participating like that yeah yeah and that usually is why i avoid sometimes my family so there's this thing there's the yeah a part of you that's angry about how you might be treated or ha- or have been treated or would be treated um in in relation to how your your views on death or your experience or your reaction to death yeah mm-hmm. yeah well, that would be a definitely be something we could explore would be that like anger mm-hmm. well. I to explore that Mm-hmm. We could. Or, or or any of it or none of it. I I I now I feel I can feel the, the I can feel it. So <laughs> Yeah. It's a good one. It's right. It's there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So if you want to. Uh yeah, where, where do you feel it? How how does it how does it show up? Like in your body? It shows up right where my heart is um and it feels like drinking three four espresso based drinks 
and being pounded with this strong energy that is very unnatural. <laughs> huh. Okay. All right. All right. So you have this, and that's, and that's the kind of, you were calling it anger. That's was the same part. Yeah, that's anger. Okay. Okay. And then you have this uh, other part that's calling it unnatural. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to explore the anger, I would say to ask that part that sees it as unnatural or, or, uh, or any, it has any kind of that judgment about it. To see if you can ask that part, if it'll step back and give you some space to work with the part that's angry. And just see how it reacts. Yeah, these parts just feel very complacent and okay to just separate or be what they are. Great. So how are you feeling now towards this angry part? It almost feels like it's just frozen, like oh. it's frozen in it. It's elated feeling, but not particularly more or less angry. It's just frozen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and your feeling towards it, when you look at it and notice it there, how do you feel towards that part? Uh, the more I feel towards it, the actual less it, it, it actually just subdues more. Okay. <laughs> So, so you're feeling, I mean, are you feeling open to, to continue getting to know it? Or are you feeling curious about it? Good question. Or, It's almost like I'm curious, but then it just anytime I want to even now get closer, it just is like, no, who cares? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just like okay. falls back. It almost retreats, but in a natural way. Yeah, I, I think I know what you mean. Um, so you're saying the part, the angry part is kind of as you as you kind of shine your light on it and become curious about it it kind of retreats or subdues and maybe even it, and it's having that or it's giving that message of who cares. It, it's not even giving the message of who, like it, it is just like dissipating where it's like, I guess how anger itself can dissipate. But the more I examine when I even want to, the less I could just. Yeah. So, so the reason I was asking that is I'm wondering if there's, if there's another part that's coming in and saying, oh, who cares about this little old anger? It's not worth investigating. Or if that feels like that's coming from the anger itself. Hmm. 
I don't, I think, I don't think it's from the anger itself. I think maybe trying to uh, feel around. um, Mm -hmm. Looking for that part that says, who cares? Um, I just, I feel like Am I drawing a blank? (laughs) It's all right. I'll I'll put out there that I care about, like for me, I'm like really curious about getting to know this angry part, even if it's not very extreme, even if you've, it feels like since you've taken notice of it, it's already kind of abated. Um, I feel like mm. even even then it's kind of like, yeah, there's, there's usually something more to, to learn or to, or to have an insight about. But I also don't want to, you know, it's, this is your time and it's your decision. So I'm not going to say, oh, we have to go there. But I know I'm very curious. Well, I think when, actually when you bring this up, going back from the anger, going to guilt, and then mm-hmm. going to Catholicism, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's bringing, bringing, bringing it up, bringing something up. Yeah. Um, And yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel like uh, the, it would focus on my left arm, this part, this almost, I feel like a fullness in my, my left side of my body. Mm -hmm. Almost like taking it over. Um, Is that, then that feels separate from the part that was angry? Yeah, maybe it is actually separate, but it's a different anger. Because I feel like it's, it is a little bit almost would cradle that other anger feels like this part this part is somatically it feels like it's the cradle it's like my arm and yeah most of my kind of the feelings that like make me feel um, or most of the parts that have this, these kinds of angers use will live on my left side. Um, uh-huh.
Okay. Does that one feel like a part that you'd like to get to know better? Sure, yeah. Okay. And when it comes up and you notice it there, how do you feel towards that part? It wants to say it's five years old. Okay. Um, I feel like I don't, I feel like I don't know it. Like I don't know it as a self, like as a curious self, I don't even know it. I just know that it wants to say it's five. It, I, it, I'm starting to get to know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so do you want to? Do you want to get to know it better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any other, do you have any other parts that are concerned about you getting to know that part? No. Okay. Great. So yeah, take that part for the, for its information and uh, yeah, invite it. Let it know that you'd like to get to know it and ask it what else it has to share with you. What else does it want you to know about it? Like a complaining five year old. Mm-hmm. And as you learn about its nature right now, that it's complaining. Um, yeah, again, kind of how do you feel towards it? Does it are you okay with that? Um, I'm okay with it. I feel like if I had a complaining five-year-old, I'd try to give it some compassion. So I'm trying. Now's your chance. I your mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not working off your cues. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm seeing this five-year-old and I'm like, oh, shoot. I need to calm it down. Um, okay. Yeah. So start with that compassion. Let it know that you see it. Let it know that you see its complaints, that you hear it loud and clear, that you feel it. Just let it know that you want to help it. And by getting to know it, that it can tell you what it wants to tell you and that you don't even have to share any of it out loud or with me or anything. Oh, it brings memories to me, actually. It's like now I'm actually this five year old. Okay. Well, um, you could let this part know that the best way for you to get to know it is for it to just communicate with you without trying to take you over. And if it and if it can agree to that, that would be awesome. Be able to do this, do this work most most efficiently. And we'll be able to help it out. So we do want to see what it has to say, but just ask it not to overwhelm you, not to take you over.
Yeah, well, certainly it wants to be loved. I feel like it it does need some care. Mm -hmm. um, and what is it? What is it wanting to show you? Again, you don't have to share with me, but. What does it have to say about its situation or its pain or its burden? Mm -hmm. Just to help you understand it better. Well, I'll just say, I think it doesn't want to sit on these chairs every Sunday. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let it know that. Let it know that makes sense to you. That you see it and you see that struggle and that difficulty it had sitting on the chairs every Sunday. And then it makes sense to you. Yeah, I think it, it's also, yeah, mutually agreeing or feeling a bit better of having that related relate, relation yeah. Yeah, it can tell you stuff. It can tell you what's going on with it, right? That's what, that's yeah. what you want to convey to it, is that whatever it's pain or secrets or things that it wasn't able to say at the time, it can tell you now, and it'll be okay. I certainly am now exploring the feeling of how lonely this part was and you're okay exploring all that right yeah yeah great good yeah you're witnessing it Just try to stay in that space with it. Just keep asking it to show you what it needs to show you until it really feels like you understand it. It's definitely a part I'm going to have to come back to because mm -hmm. um, it's receptive, but I think it has its own, I think it definitely has its own parts or there's some sort of complexity. Sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. And is that something you're willing to do to come back and keep keep learning about it in the future? Um, I hope so. I, I mean, I need to continue um, to do my parts work, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I make dates with mine on. Put them, put them on the calendar and try not to, you know, there's only so many hours in a day to introspect. So as long as you're, as yeah. long as you can really make that kind of commitment, it, it really helps the parts too, to not overwhelm because they know that you'll be back. And a lot of times the reason they're overwhelming is because they feel like this is their one chance to, to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and yeah, just whatever it's showing you, just try to let it know that you see that, that you, that you care and that you understand it's complex. There might be other parts that have exiled it or pushed it around and it might take a long time to learn, learn about that constellation of parts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if you, when you said you want to come back to it, I don't know if that was you saying that you want to stop, uh, or if, or if you'd like to go on a little more. Um, you know, I think it's, we can, I can, yeah, transition out of this and maybe like, I feel like it is definitely like, I feel like I've done or we've done, like I've talked to this part enough I think today <laughs> yeah okay um That's I, fine. I mean I sort of I'm not going to yeah I feel like this is a new part or I can uh-huh. now I can locate it's huge yeah that is um huge yeah and just you know just kind of let it know you know hopefully not just slamming the door on it but just just let it know that's your That's mm-hmm. kind of your plan, and that's and that's where you are with it. Um, I might also suggest just checking if it did feel like there was a a part trying to take you out. If there was a part that was like concerned about this work, or like, "Hey, what about me?" or something. That might also be good to to just bookmark to to just listen out if that if it felt like that that you would want to bookmark that too. Okay. Um, for me, it just feels like this one part, but I feel like there's so much environment around this part. It's almost mm. like a scene, and yeah. Um, Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's, I, I feel funny in the way that whenever I do IFS, I really get very somatic, like I feel very out of body and like, whoa. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it can be a lot, it can be a lot. And I just, I mean, I really appreciate and respect your listening to the pace that feels right for you. You're, you know, this is, this is an area where you definitely don't want to compare your, compare your journey to anyone else's. It's just, mm-hmm. yeah. When you meet a new part, that is a very big deal. Yeah. Or do you have any ideas about how to kind of next steps, how to, where to go next or how to conclude if you're ready to conclude? Um, hmm.
I think the next next steps are just yeah, finding the time to um yeah talk to this part a bit more yeah and I think yeah I think I said my goodbye for now with this part um. Yeah, interesting. Great. Yeah, definitely interesting. This part, it felt like when I said seats and chairs, it just felt like a, also like a vertical stack of chairs, like a row of chairs just piled upward. Hmm. weird feeling kind of towering towering over it or yeah like weird yeah i guess it wasn't even like tower it just i just felt an immense yeah i guess it is like a tower but it wasn't like they were towered i it was it's it strange i can't uh, yeah yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated, and uh, you know, I hope that I hope that you do continue checking in with that part and just learning about that. And if you want to include me, that I'd be honored. And if cool. not, that's fine too. If that helps you, you know, if that helps you make time for it, also, it's. I know that I really feel. Uh, I feel great about seeing some seeing someone's name show up on my calendar and it's like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna be doing this work today and it's kind of a nice a nice way to commit to it for me thank you yeah no we can i'm definitely going to i i i, I appreciate our rapport so i'm gonna yeah book, me too book another one um i i don't know how this is going to turn out in the sense of a episode but by all means oh man this that's the last thing on my mind really okay <laughs> so. and 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 I, I you know i i i know that you know you think about it i think about it we everyone who has these calls thinks about it but it's kind of like there's no there's no pressure whatsoever to even publish it right um and you know, I just, I just put out whatever happens and I don't, I don't do a whole lot of like editing or, I mean, unless there's an important reason to, or, or, or nitpicking going back and, and, and trying to, you know, examine every step or anything. It's just, it's just is what it is. And we're all, mm. we're all going our different journeys and. True. Uh, yeah. Honestly, it's it's yeah, it's kind yeah. of the one more it's kind of just one more way for me to be accountable. It's kind of just one more way I feel like that I'll actually do it because it's a project. So Yeah. That's cool. That's that's, that's a big part of my motivation. Can you hear me? Sorry, this is lagging. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay keep up the good work um you too i will i will do you want to help bring more self energy to the world if you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way i'd love to hear your ideas join the discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com a huge thanks to our audio engineer yvonne for your care and diligence in editing the calls, to every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts, and to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, 
we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.